Hi, I'm Mike, KD2KOG, part of the technical support team at SDR Play. In this video, I will demonstrate the decoding of APRS transmissions using Windows. I will show you how to set up a virtual audio cable, as well as routing the audio from SDR Connect into MultiPSK, and finally setting up MultiPSK correctly to decode APRS packets. You might be saying, I've seen this video already, Mike. You've done it before. This is true. I released a video about APRS a few years back, but that was using SDR Uno. This is an updated video now using SDR Connect. I've placed helpful links in the video's description. I've also linked to my updated APRS helper PDF. This PDF outlines what is shown in this video. If you're new to all this, you might be saying, what is APRS? APRS, which stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System, is a real-time digital communication system used primarily in amateur radio, allowing users to share information like location, speed, and other data with others in the network. In short, it's like a digital bulletin board where anyone can send and receive information and is often visualized on a map. Using an RSP, a virtual audio cable, and a decoder, we can easily decode these packets. So let's get started. First, I will need to install a virtual audio cable, often called a VAC. If you have a virtual audio cable already installed, you can skip this step. I'm using a paid-for-use virtual audio cable, but there are free ones that will work just fine. Links are in the video description. A virtual audio cable is a driver that will allow applications to digitally redirect audio from one application, SDR Connect, into another, MultiPSK. After installation, restart. Not power down, but restart the PC. I will now install MultiPSK. MultiPSK is a paid-for-use decoder. It has a multitude of modes it can decode. If you're new to using MultiPSK, I do have videos on this channel with many how-to videos. Stick with it, it's very good. Now that both applications are installed, let's configure them for use with SDR Connect. The virtual audio cable that I use does not require a configuration. It's a single audio pair. MultiPSK is going to need to be configured for, to make use of the virtual audio cable. So let's do that first. You can leave all the settings basically at default. The only options you want to change in here is the sound card input and sound card output. For the input, I'm going to select the virtual audio cable. For the output, I usually select the same thing. It's not going to make use of it. And then under screen open after startup, you want it to go to the open RXTX screen after startup. Save the parameters and then click RXTX screen. You can close this box. Within MultiPSK, you're going to want to select packet plus APRS. So we'll go ahead and do that. And let's minimize it. Within SDR Connect, you're going to go to the sidebar to audio, audio device, and select the virtual audio cable output. Let's go ahead and select the NRSPST in compact mode. I will unmute it, raise the volume about halfway, and let's click play. 
the squelch is enabled. I believe the frequency for APS trans, APRS transmissions in the United States is 144.390. So let's leave that there. And we'll shut the squelch off. And let's take a look at multi-PSK and we should have decodes. Now let's change the display here in multi-PSK. The first option I'm going to do is adjust the font and the background color. And that's it. There's nothing else to set. And as you can see, the packets are being decoded here. If you would like to see a map of where these APRS transmissions are coming from, you can click the map. And the map option, actually all the APRS options are shown here. Let's configure the map to use North America. And we'll leave this running for a little bit. And let's just go over one option that I did overlook from the beginning. Within SDR Connect, the mode is FM, is narrow FM, and the filter preset is 12K. There's no other options here that you really need to change. Uh, if you want to use the squelch, you can. If you want to uh, change the threshold of the squelch, go ahead and do that. I usually leave the squelch open. And let's go back into multi-PSK and see if there's any other decodes. And there you have it. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. 73 for now, and I'll see you in the next video.